Right. I'm going to go back to the screensaver in case you uh, came in a little bit late. Uh, it's a great introduction to uh, uh, Tonglen, what this really means. Tonglen is a, a way to, to work with the um, difficulties in the world, with the, the miseries, with the sorrow. And uh, this was an icon by Robert Lentz, who's, not, who's now graduated, but he was a great icon maker. I love, uh, he was a Franciscan. And this was, of course, uh, generated by uh, 22 years ago, 9-11. Okay, the attack on the, uh, the city. You see the planes flying around there. You see the two towers smoking. Now what's, just to give this a look, this is the Tonglen attitude. Whatever happens, uh, where the mind can't deal with it, the body is, you know, limited. But notice where the smoke is, where this dark smoke is. It's right at the, the heart center. And this is, the icon's called Our Lady of Sorrows, but that's uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's the icon of, of contemplation, of being able to hold the uh, sorrows of the world, hold the sorrows of her own life, you see, what happened to her son. But, uh, and notice the way she's holding it. Uh, it's a kind of mand mandalic uh, uh, setup where her hands are and where the smoke is at the heart. Now, that's the thing that if you're absolutely new to tone line, that's the thing to remember is that uh, this work gets done in the sacred heart, what's called the sacred heart. Uh, the Buddhists call it the bodhicitta which means the awakened heart or the both in both cases, whether it's a Catholic tradition or a Tibetan Buddhist tradition, this heart we're talking about, this heart of heart to heart is infinite. It can hold everything and still have room. And um, one thing you, you learn if you, you know, know anything about bomb making is the explosive nature of, of a bomb is because it's packed in real tight, like the, Boston Marathon bombers, you know, they packed in uh, all the things in it, like a pressure cooker. But when you, if you had those same elements in a vast space, well, they lose the, their devastating uh, ability. They lose their explosive ability. And so to be able to take whatever is, it could be just in your own life, something unfortunate happened, people get sick, ill, you get sick, ill, die. Uh, uh, you lose things, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in your own life. Well, it's very, it's very helpful to take those. And that's why the, the, the first part of the practice today, well, if you missed last week, we, uh, we just focused last week on doing Tonglen for yourself for what's happening in your own life, personal. Okay. And that's really the, the uh, skip that's often, uh, a step that's often skipped. Uh, today we'll piggyback on that. We'll, we'll both we'll do a formal thing with, where we'll start with the uh, tonglen for yourself, and then tonglen for maybe just one other person, some loved one, which is a good way to start. Uh, some loved one that's experiencing difficulties. There's in our group today. There's, you know, probably every person has some difficulty, some sorrow. So. This is, this is really a good picture because her attitude there is one of confidence, of composure, even though the planes are there. You notice in the background, if you have a good screen in the background is infinity behind her. You can see the stars. So she's in a bigger context. The whole overall shape of that, uh, Icon is a mandorla, which is a mandorla is a kind of egg shaped uh, thing, which is it's it's typical of Russian um, and Eastern Orthodox uh, icons. Uh, and so there's a bit of a holding uh, something new to be born out of this sorrow. That's what the egg represents is uh, life to come. And uh, yeah. She's almost holding it like she's pregnant with something, some positive thing to come out of the negative, you see. Uh, 
on the left side and the upper left side of the icon is in Cyrillic, it's, it's the word for peace. And on the uh, right side is New York, NY, yeah. So we have that from the Christian tradition. And then we had, uh, if you weren't here for the opening um, music, it was uh, from Tibetan source, including the Dalai Lama saying, you know, uh, as long as space endures and as long as living beings remain, may I too abide to dispel the misery of the world. Yeah, yeah, all right. You know, that's, that's, that's just from the, the other tradition. They're both the same. The wisdom and compassion combines to just, you can't have wisdom without compassion. And compassion says when something hurts, you want to help if you can. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to drop the screensaver. We'll be back to together. All right. Now I'm going to do another 9-11 uh, item here, and then we'll, we'll just jump into the practice. This was a poem written on 9-11. One of my dear friends gave me a illustrated version of it, which I have on the wall um, in the Zendo here in the kitchen area. It's, and it's called Wage Peace. It was written by uh, uh, Judith Hill on the, you know, it's what 9-11, you know, if you rem remember what you were doing on 9-11, if you're older than 22, you, you might have some memory of that. And uh, she sat down with this horror and wrote this poem. So I thought it would be nice to start with this because this is also like the picture. This is the spirit of, of Tung Glenn. It starts out with the essence of Tung Glenn. I don't know if Judith, I don't know anything about uh, Judith Hill. I don't know if she actually knew about the practice of Tung Glenn, but this she knew at some level. As I feel did Jesus. Jesus, I think, was a Tung Glenn a master. She starts off first line right off the bat, wage peace with your breath. Breathe in firemen and rubble. Breathe out whole buildings and flocks of red winged blackbirds. Breathe in terrorists and breathe out sleeping children and freshly mown fields. Breathe in confusion and breathe out maple trees. Breathe in the fallen and breathe out lifelong friendships intact. Wage peace with your listening, hearing sirens pray loud. Remember your tools, flower seeds, Clothespins, pins, clean rivers, make soup, play music, memorize the words for thank you in three languages, learn to knit and make a hat. Think of chaos as dancing raspberries. Imagine grief as the outbreath of beauty or the gesture of fish, swim for the other side. Wage peace, wage peace. Never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Act as if armistice has already arrived. Celebrate today. Wage peace. Never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Act as if armistice has already arrived. Celebrate today. That's uh, called Wage Peace by Judith Hill. Yeah. It'll be in tomorrow's uh, uh, mail out. Yeah, brilliant, I think. Uh, the, from the very first line, wage peace with your breath. That peace is, uh, is found in the breath itself. And then at the very end, you know, 
to say on the day of 9-11, never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Well, she's coming from a deep spirituality. Nobody just writes this just out of the moment to see the freshness and the preciousness in that disaster. She's got a tongue in mind. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Act as if armistice has already arrived. Armistice is you need to declare the armistice, the war is over. Ask as if armistice is already alive. Celebrate today. Yeah, I just really like that whole uh, attitude. Tonglen is more of an attitude than anything else. It's a kind of attitude that um, you're equipped to deal with anything. Nobody teaches this, you know, really, other than the, the masters and the traditions, because the, the culture itself uh, says, you, you know, you depend on us. You know, what, what would have happened if George Bush with his bullhorn had read that poem from the, the pile where he stood? You, know, you might remember that moment. We're going we're gonna to get these guys. <laughs> you know, it was like, all right, we're going to hit them back. Well, I can understand that too. I've done it myself. But uh, 22 years later, where are we? You know, with that approach. Huh. So, so we're going to look at the, the fact that we have the ability to deal with things going on in our life. That's why you always start with doing Tonglen for yourself. And that's, a, it, there's a kind of, uh, you, you wage a kind of peace with the breath. And so the breath is going to be our vehicle. Again, you know, in, in this world where we're connected with the entire world now, one of the effects is you feel like things are so huge, what can I do? So there's a kind of um, a feeling of, uh, of just despair at the fact that it's too big to deal with. Overwhelm hits a lot of people. Well, uh, the teachings, Chris, the deep Christianity and deep Buddhism uh, teach that, no, you're equipped. You're equipped with this transformative tool known as the sacred heart, known as the awakened heart or the Buddha heart. You see, we come equipped with that from birth. Many people never discover it in this lifetime. That's one of the great, uh, you know, great sadnesses. And so they're overwhelmed and they, you know, uh, they don't know what to do with the uncertainty of life, the cruelty of life, the insanity sometimes. Well, Tonglen will help you. So I'm just going to lead you through it. And, uh, but know that when I talk about heart and I talk about breathing, you know, that, that this darkness we're facing into the heart. I had a great email last week. I really appreciate it from one of our uh, more recent members, a woman who had uh, some heart disease and, and she had encountered a uh, the teaching to Tonglen, but was afraid to do it because, you know, it's talking about breathing the darkness and or the illness or the sadness into the heart. Well, she said, "Oh no, I can't do that," because she she had a she, she had problems with her physical heart already, and and it just it was a couple words I said that I don't I don't always say when I talk about it because I know I have in my mind what this heart I'm talking about, but I said, you know, we're not talking about the physical heart, which is brilliant in its own right. But we're talking about uh, the sacred heart, the awakened heart uh, of the Buddhists, the sacred heart of the of the Christians. Okay, and so that's a different thing. That's vast. That's vast. That can hold anything and diffuse anything by the spaciousness of it. That's the thing you remember when you go into the very biggest place in your. The mind is vast, but it's not. I mean, it's not infinite. You know. So there's such a thing as you know, we can hold a lot of information. Uh, we're probably holding 10 times more information and data than either the Buddha or Jesus held, but that's still limited. That, that doesn't help you with this problem. So we're going into this sacred heart. Okay, just remember that in case you're, and if anything really, if it, if it's, if it's somehow depend on your circumstances now too much, or you don't think you could do it, that's fine too, maybe at a later date, but just you know, maybe listen to the instructions, and you can find you can find it on YouTube. 
you just type in Tom Glenn, you'll find a number of different people instructed you. But I'm just going to walk you through it a little bit. We'll we'll probably do our uh, 15 or 20 minutes of maybe maybe 15 minutes of Tom Glenn, and we'll we'll start with a little just silence, and then we'll go into the general silence of of just deep listening and meditation. So we'll bookend it with a little silence on both sides. And, but then we'll do Tom Glenn for herself. I'm Tom Glenn for at least one other person, or maybe a couple people, maybe a group. You know, we can get as big as you want. Okay. Well, let's start with the bell and just uh, listen to the bell. That's, the, that's what bells are for. Oh, yeah, at the monasteries, it'll tell you, oh, well, five minutes to, you know, chant time or whatever. You know, so they're timing devices, but that's not what we're doing here. We're striking in something that's, um, if you just listen to sound, then you're already in the listening mode. So it's not like it means anything. It means it's something to resonate. It awakens your heart because the heart resonates. Okay, so we'll just start with the sound. Just listening. Comes out of nowhere. Fades into somewhere. All of us to listen deeply. All right, you can just sit in a relaxed position. Something that feels comfortable and relaxed and just close your eyes for a moment. And we're going to go we'll begin the uh, practice of, of Tonglen for ourselves by uh, doing some stair stepping, some going down deeper and deeper in the listening, in the practice. We're just starting with the breath, just as it is. Just, just noticing, first step of conscious breathing is, it's just noticing what you're doing automatically. Just notice how your body breathes air in, and then breathes out. Not trying to change it at all, just Level one is conscious breathing. You just become aware of what's going on. You're not trying to change anything. Some is not about fixing and changing as we normally think. It's it's more like about transformation, and that's it's a different way of doing it rather than it's not nowhere like fixing situations. So just leave the breath as it is, but notice it. Notice how it comes in and goes out all by itself. Thich Nhat Hanh, who uh, is a master at conscious breathing, his first book was called The Miracle of Mindfulness. And when you're just noticing your breath going in and out, you're mindful of the miracle of the breath itself. You could do the math, but for most of us, um, this happens 20,000 times a day, all by itself. When you look at that in terms of a lifetime, do the math, you're in the billions of breaths, then 
um, you don't have to think about being conscious of breath is not thinking about it. It's just being aware of it, you see. You're aware of a miracle. And then you could go on and look at all the bodily systems that are, you don't have to tell it, tell yourself to breathe. You breathe. You don't have to tell yourself to digest the food. It just does it. It's quite a miracle, the body. So we're starting with just really with the body. Just in the breath. Just by being aware of it. Feels good just to not to have to do anything, just to notice the breath as it comes in and out and feel the breath as it comes in and out. Awareness is both mental and physical, so we're hooking up with the body and the mind in awareness. So it's not thinking about the breath coming in and out. It's actually feeling the breath coming in and out. That's conscious breathing, step one. That in itself can turn a minor freak out. You can level it out just by taking a few minutes to breathe. And then we can shift gears a little bit, go a little deeper. And now the practice of uh, sacred breathing or circular breathing is the step two. You breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. <coughs> Just breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. We're making a little shift. And it's interesting when you notice this kind of breathing. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. When you notice this kind of breathing, you might notice that your breath gets deeper. It's not shallow like maybe it was at first. It's going deeper into the body, into the lungs, maybe even down into the lower abdomen a little bit, much deeper breath. You didn't even have to do that. It just happens when you breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. And if you purse your lips on the out breath, like you're blowing out a candle, that slows the out breath down a little bit. And, uh, you then you don't hyperventilate. It becomes slow and easy on the in breath, slow and easy on the out breath through the first lips. And your lips have quite a few sensory neurons in them. And um, it helps you shift over from thinking about all this to actually feeling it as the breath goes out through your lips. I do this uh, as I'm waiting, as Jill's bringing people in, co-host, and uh, as I'm getting ready to, to, to talk and dress the group, I do this kind of breathing. It's one of my go-tos. Uh, it also, if you, if, you, if you look at the neurology, which has been measured, you're switching from fight or flight, this kind of uh, edgy awareness that's helpful when you're maybe in a in a jam or being threatened. So it switches from the it's like pushes a neurological switch when you breathe this way to switch from fight or flight to a kind of calmness. You might be feeling that. So that's the second level, the second step down. So let's keep doing that, but we'll add a third step. Now, as we're breathing in, also add the, the visualization now that when you breathe in through the nose, you're also breathing in through each and every pore in the body. Visualize your body here and just sort of see that. And then out the out breath through pursed lips, but also each and every pore in the body is breathing out. So now the exchange is a little bit bigger.
really see yourself in your visualization mind's eye as fresh air coming in, stale air going out, which is actually what we're doing in respiration. Fresher air is coming in, nutritious air. Waste products and all kinds of staleness are going on. This is called whole body breathing. You're breathing in through every cell. And actually it's a visualization, but it's also real because the pores on our skin do breathe. We're not breathing in all the oxygen we need through our nose or mouth. Our body is breathing. This is your breathing body that we're starting to be in touch with. It's a whole body. You don't have to tell your pores to breathe. They just breathe on their own. It's autonomic. We're just paying attention to what it feels like. And now we'll go down the next step once we've established the like kind of whole body breathing. Now we'll do what's called uh, the, the tongue one breath for ourselves. In which case, uh, it's also called cellular breathing in the Tibetan tradition where you're now you're breathing in from every cell, all the all the darkness, all the sadness, all the disease perhaps in every cell from the top of your head to the soles of your feet to your fingertips. You're breathing in all the, the darkness, just like the smoke in the icon. You're breathing in all the darkness into the sacred heart, right in the center of your, your chest. Again, not your physical heart. You can actually, if you have some kind of heart disease, you can be breathing that into the sacred heart. And then what you're breathing back to every cell, billions of cells now is the fresh. So we reversed it now. We're breathing in to the sacred heart from every cell in the body, including the cells in our physical heart, the darkness, the pain, the suffering, maybe the grief, maybe the uncertainty. These are all forms of darkness and we store them in each and every cell, billions of cells. And so this is a kind of um, cleansing of the whole body. So breathing in the pain, the suffering, the darkness, the uncertainty, just as if it's black or a dark kind of energy. I see it coming up from the bottoms of my feet. I see it coming down from my head. I see it coming in from tips of my fingers on both arms to the center. And then on the out breath, we're sending back white light, pure white light. So just uh, do that for a moment. Breathing in from every cell, top to bottom, right into the center, and breathing back, clean, pure, light, cool, light. Maybe it's warm light. Maybe it's dark. It can be black coming in and white going out. Those are the essential dimensions, darkness and light. And it could be, the colors could be different. We have dark blue sometimes, maybe it's dark red. And maybe you send back a different color. You have really a lot of flexibility when you get into visualization. 
So just go with it. Go with what seems to be happening. What does your body need? This is doing atonement for, for yourself. Physically, psychologically, and spiritually, you're taking in the darkness and the pain and the suffering, the uncertainty into the bodhicitta, into the sacred heart. And you're sending back some sense of relief. See how that feels. I have an air purifier on in the Zendo. I got two of them when I have people here besides myself. You know, this was something we learned in COVID. So see the Sacred Heart or the uh, Bodhicitta is just a built-in air purifier. It's taking the impurities, the trouble, the fear, panic. Despair, grief, just breathing it in, and sending back whatever these parts of your body need. You don't need to know what you're taking in, and you don't need to know what you're sending back. It's basically sorrow in, love back, darkness in. Life back. You know, it's good to as you as you shift out as we widen the circle of compassion from compassion for ourselves compassion for others you know start small think of perhaps one uh, friend or loved one and sitting in front of you in your mind's eye see them you know seeing my uh, brother-in-law jim sitting in his house in chicago you know so you visualize the person and then you do the same thing for them you breathe in through every pore in your body, the suffering of that person right now, the darkness, however it comes to you, black or some other shade, and then out through your, every pore in your body, you're sending them light. Start with somebody you love who's suffering or alone. Breathing in the darkness, the suffering, sending them back just what they need. You don't have to know what they need. You don't have to know really what their suffering is. There's no way to know that. You're working with someone like that. Somebody was in remote, like miles away, 500 miles away. Breathing in their sorrow, their stuff, their suffering, their pain. Breathing in the darkness, breathing back relief for them at the moment. Whatever color you see, light, white, pink, feel free. It's a very fluid practice. We'll just do it for a few more minutes. And whatever happens now, you just go with it. Sometimes there's two people. All of a sudden, didn't come as one. There was a couple or, or maybe a few more people show up. You're not in, you know, you're, you can do it for as many. You can do it for the whole planet. You can do it for the whole galaxy if you want. They can get that big, but so just trust, you know, if you're just doing it for one person, that's enough right now. But if more come, you can handle it. And just breathing in, 
there's Sauron sending back some relief, whatever that would be. You don't have to know the specifics. Let's just do this for a couple of minutes more. You may still be doing it for yourself because you may be in quite a pickle. That's all right, too. Just stay with the self if you need it. You can just um, to shift back to just the empty field of just normal meditation. It's good to bookend your formal Tonglen practice with a little just sitting and emptiness, and then you do the work for yourself or others, but then to come back to just letting go of all that, no manipulation whatsoever in formal meditation or contemplation. You're just, you're just sitting here and listening in deep silence, letting all visualization go when you're ready. And we'll spend a few moments together like this. So we basically sandwich the practice between two slices of, of just silence. Right, lovely. Now, we really continue in this kind of deep listening now, but we add a 
it's a slightly different form of meditation. As we continue to listen in the silence, we um, open up the options to, uh, you could always, uh, once you're out of formal meditation, jot, jot things as they occur to you as you know, thoughts all the way through this third part of uh, heart to heart. It's always polite to write. I'll, I'll do the same thing when I'll hear something that really resonates. So I jot out my notepad here. So it's always polite to write. But essentially, that's just another form of listening. Words are the voice of the heart. And sometimes it comes through and you just want to jot it down. Well, feel free to do that. And as we sit in the silence, if um, something uh, comes up that you just feel like, well, It'd be a great gift to to tell the group because uh, we're we're in the community phase now where I'll, I'll mute in a minute and you can unmute and, and you know share something with the group give the group a gift of your awareness even if it's a gift of your struggle that's a gift because uh, when you share struggles uh, they're cut in half really. And also other people say, oh, I'm struggling with that. I'm not the only one. So it's okay to share struggles, and, but also the insights and whatever. But it'll always come and go out of the silence. So silence and listening is always the backdrop. You could say where if you, you stay the whole way to around 1230, you've been in silence for 90 minutes. And some people... I mean, who has 90 minutes of that? in their daily life in our culture is very rare, very, very precious. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna mute now. And so we'll go into deeper silence. <laughs> 